Good day, dear learners. Welcome to the assignment based contact sessions. This is for e economics module one for the diploma in um, secondary education. Um, my name is Penehafo Hangula. I am the moderator for economics. I am standing in for Ms. Tamuela Shanika who is your tutor. He is unfortunately not able to conduct the sessions today. So I'll stand in for him. Uh, please pay close attention to the session uh, because this would uh, serve as a guideline or assistance in aiding you to do your assignments and also for future exams as well. So this is for the economics module, which is um, uh, you, you, or you guys are familiar with or have just started doing at the moment. We'll start off with private firms as producers. Within an economy um, or the economics um, topic as we speak about it, they are private firms who act as producers for a certain society. So in this we would say in economics we can distinguish between the following basic market structures in which firms operate. Perfect competition, monopolistic, oligograph polygraphy, and monopoly. The type of market structure in which a firm operates has an impact on its cost and revenue decisions. So when you, when you study this um, content within your study guide, make sure to understand all those four types of markets that I explained in this or mentioned in this slide. We, and in, when we study economics, we, we also study about the principles of maximizing, maximizing profit. There are two profit concepts that are used in economics. We have normal profits and we have abnormal profit. We explain normal profit to say is equal to the best return that the firm's self-owned, self-employed resources could end elsewhere. It is the minimum payment required by the owner of the firm to stay in a particular business. Normal um, profits uh, is where a, pro a producer earns a normal profit if average revenue, which is abbreviated by AR, of a product is equal to its average cost, which we abbreviate by AC, or when total revenue is equal to total cost. If the formula for calculating um, normal profit is AR equals to AC, or in other words where we say TR is equal to TC. Then we talk about abnormal profit or economic profit. In uh, most uh, institutions, companies want to earn economic profit. Um, Abnormal or economic profit is equal to the amount of total revenue that exceeds the total cost. Abnormal profit is the extra profit that the owner receives above the minimum payment required by the owner of the firm to stay in a particular business. The formula for calculating ab abnormal profit is where we say average revenue is more than the average cost. Please pay attention to the signs as well. In this case, this sign is for greater or more than, or otherwise we say total revenue is greater than total cost. In, in such um, cases, we might be able to ask you a mini activity as the one explained here, where you'll be asked to explain the difference between normal and abnormal profit for a firm. This could carry an average of four marks or a maximum of four marks within a, a simple test or an assignment. 
when we talk about economics we do not forget about unemployment unemployment is the general unemployment um, to the extent of joblessness in a given country at any given point in time this is also where we say when someone is unemployed is when a person within a, a job getting age is not employed there are different forms of unemployment within an economic um, sector we have structural unemployment we have cyclonic cl clonic, um, unemployment we have seasonal unemployment we have technological unemployment and fractional unemployment uh, please acquaint yourself with these concepts to an extent that you can explain each and every form of unemployment. Also make sure that if given uh, statistics, you would be able to calculate the rate of unemployment within a certain country. Then we move on to the next topic which is the price of labor. This is the price of labor as a factor of production determined by the market demand and supply conditions. The higher the demand for labor, the higher the rate of pay. Labor can be divided into different or the following groups. We have the skilled and unskilled labor. We have private sector and the public sector. We have male or female. We have agriculture manufacturing and services sector. We have area and regional factors. And then we would also talk about the business size within the economy. Um, any economic sector has different markets. In this case, we will speak about, or we would concentrate on financial markets. A financial market is a market in which financial assets are traded in addition to enabling the exchange of previously issued financial assets financial markets also facilitate the process of borrowing and lending some of the key basic functions of a financial market are the ones we mentioned below one or the first one being borrowing and lending a uh, second one being price determination information aggre aggregation and coordination, risk sharing, liquidity and efficiency. We should be able to understand all these functions and be able to explain them further if asked to do so. I think the biggest um, step to understanding economics is when you understand demand and supply. The law of demand, we'll start off with the law of demand. Demand is termed, uh, used to describe how much of a good will be bought at a particular price. The law of demand states that the quantity demanded falls as the price um, and the increase, as the price rise and the increase as the price fall. There are different factors that influence the demand that would be required within a society. The first one would be the income. Income is a, one of the most influential factors that affect demand. Second one is consumer taste and preferences. Third being the price of a substitute goods. The second or, th or fourth being the price of complementary goods. Um, it's, it's, it's very important to understand the concept of substitute goods and complementary goods. Substitute goods is a, a good that you would substitute in order to use instead of another good. Uh, this example could be you having wanted to buy a gas bag so in this case, you would opt to buy 
a normal no name bag let's say and a bag from mr price so in that case you still got your bag but it's not the initial guest bag you wanted so this is where we say it's a substitute good when it comes to complementary goods is products that go hand in hand you need one for the other one in this case i would give complementary uh, goods like coffee and coffee creamer or coffee and uh, milk those complement each other you one who drinks coffee or tea would want their coffee to go with creamer or milk another factor that um, influences demand is also the size of the market when it when we speak of demand or when you read about demand in your study guide this topic please be able to conceptualize all these factors be able to calculate elasticity if asked to and if given um, figures or statistics be able to draw the demand curve at any given time or be able to instead of writing an explanation explaining it on a graph the second um, part of economics is the supply uh, this is the quantity supplied of a good or service um, which is positively related to its price as firms will be willing to supply more at a higher price the law of supply states that the higher the price of a good the more of those goods the firm will be willing to supply. It makes sense that an increase in the price of goods will have an increase in the quantity supplied as producers see this as an opportunity to generate um, greater profits or more revenue. Um, in essence, there are also factors causing changes in the supply curve. At this point, you should be able to draw, to draw the supply curve, draw the shifts of supply and all that. So changes of a price will cause a movement along the supply curve. Suppliers will be willing to supply more at a higher price and less at lower prices. The following factors will cause a shift in the supply curve. First being changes in input cost changes in competition, changes in the price of substitutes, new business entering the market, changes in the supply of factors of production, e.g. labor, um, not forgetting other, other hints or info that I can still give you is be able to draw the supply curve be able to illustrate if asked to illustrate on a graph how does a movement along the supply curve look like how does a shift on the supply curve look like and if given statistics or information data would you be able to draw this and evaluate given different um, situations or scenarios regarding supply equilibrium after studying demand and supply, there's a point where they meet, where both of them are willing to supply at a given price. This is what we call equilibrium. When, when we define it, we would say it is the price where demand curve and supply intersect. At this intersection, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal. This is also where, in layman's term, we would say consumers are happy to pay the price that suppliers charge for their products. Another um, important uh, thing you should be able to do regarding this concept is be able to illustrate and interpret it on a graph if asked to, 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 to draw it. Then we have price elasticity which refers to the measuring of cons consumers and producers' reaction to changes in price. The measurement of the reaction of demand to a change 
in price is called price elasticity of demand. The formula for that is where we say price elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. That is how we calculate um, elasticity of uh, price elasticity of demand. Equally, you should be able to illust uh, um, illustrate or calculate the elasticity of supply. You should be able to um, mention or explain the factors influencing the elasticity of um, demand and supply. We have come to the end of this session, but I would like to urge you that even though this, the, the contact session does not include all the topics within the study guide, please go through your whole study guide, read each chapter from chapter 1 to the last chapter, make sure you understand all the chapters, go through your outcome, go through your syllabus, go through extra materials that has been highlighted or mentioned in your study guide, interact with um, students that are studying the same subject even within a different course at your institution. It, 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 in, it um, equips you in such a way or helps you in your understanding that a concept that you do not understand, one of your fellow students can help you visualize it or better equip you in giving you an example of how they were taught of it in class in class so um, make sure you you are also able to when you study economics it's not something of saying let me copy and paste the definition please understand the concepts and when it comes to demand and supply, be able to, at any given time, draw it, conceptualize, analyze, evaluate, if asked to do so at any moment, you should be in such a comfortable situation that that is uh, a norm for you. Um, the assignment is out of 130 marks. Your tutor's name and means of communication are highlighted on top of the cover page. So if you need any assistance, please um, make use of the, the information that has been supplied to you to reach him at the convenient time that has been mentioned on the cover page. Um, make sure when you do your assignments, they are clear and neat, very tidy. Spelling is um, okay and up to scratch. Please do not spell the concepts and the words because the words are already in your study guide which you would have in front of you when you are doing your assignment. Um, and just make that book, uh, make that study guide your everyday um, fun novel book to read. With that said, I would like to wish you all the best in your assignment, your future exams, and let's hope by the end of this you are able to teach another student to love economics as we are teaching you to love it. Thank you and all the best.